Welcome back everyone to episode 27 of Let's Play Advanced Tactics. Advanced Tactics Gold, I should say. <laughs> so we're in a pretty good position all around. Um, I'm excited about this episode. I'm going to try to drive in and do a lot this episode. Try not to slow down too much because we have a lot to get done. And I want to try to make these episodes shorter or at least try to get it in two episodes or two turns. Okay, so we eliminate that unit. Let's try to push these units back. Get them there. I'm not sure we'll attack this turn. Probably what we'll do is use this guy to move forward and bombard with the AD AP guy. So we don't need to worry about these guys. They're just going to sit there and lose supply. So no reason to rush anything. So anything we do here is just free. It'll prevent them from attacking. We're not really worried about that anyway. So we've kept them. We're keeping them in this pocket. It does look like they are out of supply still. They've actually got a boost here. That's interesting. But we'll just continue to wear him down. Now this guy is more importantly going to try to close this pocket, which is important. Yes, indeed. This is the one. The one we have to... Hopefully, oh, that's pretty good. All right, yeah, I like what I see here. Down to 11 and zero entrenchment. That's really good, because I think this guy has to attack alone in order for my plan to work. I have to attack here. Oh, can this guy attack? No, he's going to lose all of his action points attacking there. Okay, that's fine. So I guess we'll attack here and then see what happens. Um, this guy's not going to move this way as I was thinking. I think I'm going to have him move north because we only have two artillery controlling this entire front. So we'll move here and we'll double double bombard this guy. I'm not sure if we'll actually do an attack there, but let's see how this um, bombardment goes first. Okay, so these guys lost all their action points and now these did. Not bad. Entrenchment was lowered. Readiness was lowered. 45... It's right on the cusp. I think 60 and more I don't attack, and generally 40 or below 40, so 39 and below I will. They're in this like nebulous gray zone. Let me think about it and get back to that. Okay, so how this is going to work, I think, is we can move this machine gun north. He will attack this unit. This unit attacks this unit. I think that's how it's going to work. Um, yeah, so let's attack with this unit first. Unfortunately, they do have a lot of bonuses, but hopefully that bombardment and zero entrenchment will mean that we don't take too many... Gosh, casualties, holy cow. I'm not even sure we're going to win. Oh, okay, wow. Honestly, that's a, a lot worse than I was expecting. We'll go ahead and move in. We don't even have enough action points because that attack was so devastating um, to do another attack. The good news is we can attack this machine gun now, which we will do. Hopefully mop up the remaining units. That's not so bad. We only lost one submachine gun. And this machine gun is going to move plow north with everyone else. Okay, so now this unit has to attack here. Um, should we get assistance from anybody? No, I think we'll just allow the submachine guns who will get an attack bonus in the close quarters of the forest. So we'll just hope that that overcomes them. Uh, okay, good. Not not terrible, at least. And now, who's even left to attack? I, we want to move these machine guns in. Since it takes 55, you see, to move here, that means if we do any kind of attack, we won't have enough action points to move here. So I'm going to go ahead and push there first. We want to try to attack this group from multiple sides, so I'll shift like that. And now if we attack with all, it's only two units. Uh, well, we have to do it, right? So, okay, well that worked out really well, no losses. Now, actually I wanna move this guy back. Looks like he can only move there, but that's fine, I'll do that. And this guy, well, it doesn't matter. If he only has those two choices, we'll just keep him there. And this guy has 30 action points. We don't really need him to move forward. I might move him back just because uh, he'll be closer to the supply route, and I think he's going to have to be reinforced by truck. So we'll do that. <clears throat> okay, good. So that basically clears up all the things we need to do in the south. Oh, besides, you know, cart people forward. I think I'm going to cart people forward generally on the roads just to save a little bit of supply. Not the, There's no supply tax for going off if you're at 100%. So as long as you're in the green, there's no supply tax, but... If I have to reinforce units, they can use rail if they're on the road, but they have to use truck, which consumes oil. Not that it's a big deal. We have tons of oil. And we're probably positive about 2,000 a turn right now. 
which is a really good sign. Now we're about to capture another tank factory, and there's even two more available to us, which I, I'm pretty sure when we capture those, we'll just ignore them. So, good news also is that now that we've captured that raw, we're about 40 positive on raw. Well, I guess closer to 60 positive um, on raw per turn. Now that we are building roads consistently, so it's not necessarily as high as I'm making it sound. It usually probably averages out to about 20 a turn. We've been at around 2,500 raw for, um, as far as I can remember, about six or seven turns. Okay, so I don't think we're going to do any attacks in the north. One thing I do want to do, actually, I won't do it yet, but I'm going to restructure the light armor to be only six machine gun and four rangers, just because on the attack, the machine guns aren't so amazing, you know. Um, in fact, they're worse against armor than normal infantry is. So normal infantry, well, let's just bring up the comparison. Um, we should actually do Ranger 2, because that's what we're actually using. So Ranger 2s, you can see, are better on the attack against armor. Um, they're not, obviously, they're significantly worse against infantry. Hmm. Yeah, I guess actually 7 and 3 is not so bad. I just want more of a buffer, so I was thinking 6 and 4, but that's the the nature of my brain, the min-max craziness that goes on in there. I do obsess over such small details sometimes. Let's let that one go. All right, so here, I guess I will attack, just because it's more fun. And I'm gonna try to not to choose these over the attack stack limit because we're gonna be right at the attack stack max. And I think that this tank unit is what's gonna really tip me over the edge for attacking because we have a 70, a 70, and a 210 to 40, or 210 to 50 is iffy on the odds, but 200 to 50 is, wait, sorry, <laughs> 270 to 50 is a little better. Anyway, let's hope that the armor just carries us. Well, that seems like a much better decision than I was originally thinking it would be. Okay, so let's move the armor in. And actually, instead of moving my ranger group here in, I'm going to move the one with the AT guns. They didn't attack, so this is a movement cost for them. But if I'm going to have people defending in the planes, um, I'm going to want it to be ATs and then tanks, because they have a huge armored force here. That means we're going to leave the AT guns here, uh, hopefully solidly defending. And actually, I guess I'll build a road here because we will want to do that eventually and that's where a lot of our raws are being taken up right now building these roads so we just have one more place to take before we can get the final completion of this road not that it matters because we're not in control with the road in the middle right now but it's a uh, planning for the future okay so i think that's all the stuff we want to do around here let's go ahead and move over here we have some bombardment to do it looks like what i think i'm going to do is move both of these artillery back I'm assuming I'm not going to need them up here very soon when we actually are able to take Neem. So let's just do bombardment on the French. Possibly even encourage an attack by the Germans. So how should we do this? I think we should prioritize this unit. This has 50 and this has 20, 30. Yeah, this has way more. So let's prioritize this unit with a bombardment that gets 10 rounds. Very good. So pretty <laughs> severe damage there. I didn't even notice this armored car group, but now, yeah, after the bombardment, they are visible. And also we'll move these guys in. Now, one thing I was considering doing is actually moving these guys over here. This would take away quite a lot of their, and we wouldn't be able to bombard these guys, so I won't do it, but this would just put them into a better position to bombard because they would be across the stream, so it would be easier for them to move and bombard on the next turn. However, I'm not going to do that. So we'll go ahead and just bombard these guys with the eight remaining actions. Seven, eight. Okay, good. Let's see how that worked. Wow. It worked very well. Okay, so... We still have this guy chilling here. We could even attack... But I'm going to leave this line where it is. Basically, I'm getting free damage with the artillery. There's no reason to stick my neck out just to get it chopped off. So let's just stick to our pretty defensive positions. And we'll play a little reactively right now. 
We'll take, um, I mean, eventually this road, it would be nice to get it completed. It doesn't really matter, but technically this headquarters has to go all the way around right now to access these units. Certainly it would be a lot simpler just to go up and to the left, but um, trains are just so effective that it doesn't matter if they choose an inefficient route. Which brings us up here. Okay, well, this is a pretty threatening unit, so what I'm going to do is just bombard it immediately with this group. I'm not even going to move them forward, just get all 10 action rounds, combat rounds for this group. And we're not even doing any casualties, which is unfortunate. But the main thing is I want to prevent them from attacking, so just pin them down. You can see we almost did nothing. <laughs> really didn't do much at all, did we? Okay, and yes, the prize force here is Neem. We're working our way over there. <laughs> Hmm. Um, one thing we'll want to do eventually is connect this road as such. Do we want to start working on that this turn? I don't know. Because we have this engineer. Another thing that we could consider doing is... Um, should we move through the mountains? Maybe even we should move through the mountains here. That's a pretty defendable pass as well. So if, as long as we hold it, which we should... It, make, it kind of makes sense to go here, because if you go here, then, I don't know, There's it doesn't seem like there's an advantage. Yeah. Where will we connect the road? I think this is just the road connection here, something like this. Um, but is there something to be said about moving like this? Probably. You could probably do that. Yeah, that seems to make sense. I mean, we're getting way into the future now, so... Hold your horses. All right, so this one, I'm gonna move forward here and do bombardment. And I think this guy will also move forward. What we're gonna do is kind of push the lines here. If I'm not mistaken by my math. Whoops. Um, ba -ba -ba, yellow. Here we have 74 and it takes 40 to move into low mountains. So that means that we would be at 114, which means we'd be at a 25% penalty if we moved in here. Just what I was considering doing. So we're going to hold off on that for the time being. This area is green though, so we'll go ahead and push up the armor there. And we have this new armor, which we'll push up where the previous one was. So this guy with his 100 action points is going to push all the way over to here. And we'll do the double bombardment here. Okay, so yeah, it, it was somewhat effective. If we actually killed a unit, then well... Hooray for us. It's just we're giving our artillery something to do, gain a little bit of experience. Not really super necessary. Let's get this guy over here and change him to the light armor for next turn. Okay, now what we're going to do for Neem is a double bombardment of two guys who can get full 10 rounds on him. So this is critical. I don't care about trains. Let's try to kill... <laughs> interesting we didn't but let's try to kill other things besides those we did lower their entrenchment quite a bit supposedly so that is pretty good it looks like they're sitting at an attack value combat value of like 20 20 10 so about 50 which means that we should be able to take it pretty easily what i'm going to do is attack here with both of these guys and the point of us doing this is just to get full surround on them which I think we can yeah both of these units are available to attack I'm gonna move both in actually because this guy can move here and attack yeah I don't think we'll attack with both of these we're only gonna attack with the one with the better combat value this guy will attack I think we'll probably even do a lot of shifting so this guy will move here and attack I'm only going to attack with one unit from each hex to avoid any battle stack penalty. I think that we will move this unit into the suburban because it's more important to defend. In fact, we're going to have enough people on the left, on the west side, that this guy will move forward since he won't be attacking. Actually, he's not a bad unit to attack with. What's his attack? Oh, but he's at low readiness. He only has an attack stack of 43, which is nice, but 70, 97, 91. Hmm. 
They do have some t uh, armored cars in here as well. So the the AT guns wouldn't go completely to waste. The thing is, I already have a lot of uh, armored attack, so I don't think we need to worry about the armor in here. Well, to be fair, if there was no armor, our 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 armor would just roll over them pretty easily. The point is I need somebody to move into this hex, so I'll move this unit here. Well, hmm. yeah, it's tough to say what I want to do here. Okay, I know that this unit probably won't attack because 61 on the mortar is actually low enough that I'm not going to do that. So there, now we've got defense on that hex. Problem solved. Let's move this unit here. Actually, uh, 90. I think I will still attack with this unit. Okay, so I think we have... Oh, this unit is a little bit low on readiness as well, so I'm going to grab one of the fresh machine guns and move him in. So let's uh, handpick our attack group. Our high-quality machine gun. We have uh, 50 rangers here. This group, which is a little bit lower on readiness, but not bad. And then a whole bunch of our armored groups. Which means that if this attack goes on for a lot of rounds, we might have some people dropping out because of um, running out of action points. Alright, knock on wood. Here we go. Alright, very good. So, in the end, we crushed them. It looks like we lost, what? Three machine guns, two rangers, and three rifles. Very good. Excellent. And we killed, wow, well, quite a lot of forces. About 60, I'd say, maybe even more. Including trains, which are extremely valuable, and you can only produce them from cities. So the, the staff, the train, and the rifles are the only things that are city-produced. Killing 12 infantry guns is huge from a production standpoint, but when you realize that they can just produce them infinitely from a factory, it seems like a less of a less important. Okay, first thing is we're going to do is change Neem from red from gray to something else, probably red, by assigning it to our headquarters. Yep. So we did like almost a thousand points of damage, over a thousand points of damage this turn. So that means we'll get less than if we go to production. We'll be getting less than four political points out of this guy. Yeah, three point three. But I'm not too upset about that because. I mean, I don't think that even if we had waited a turn, I don't think we could have, we would have had to attack it with artillery. So I don't see a way around bombarding it and losing that. And this is four political points versus eight. That's not so much. So fair enough. All right, so let's move some people in. Let's move um, all of our machine guns. And now this unit who I didn't move here, it only costs him 30 to move here instead of 40. Is that end going to end up being significant? No, not at all. Let's support the raw. Yeah. This guy, well, we might as well move him in then. I'm going to move this guy all the way forward here and bombard. One, it gives him something to do. And two, he gets closer to the action for next turn, which is probably more important. So this engineer, we don't need him to do anything. I can either have him start building the road here, which would help with my supply issues, or I can have him start building this road, which is, uh, it's certainly the next place that we're gonna move. And I think we have enough supply far enough here. Yeah, the problem is that there's just a stream everywhere, so we need at least one engineer. We have an engineer down here who, if we push this area back, can get over here and do that. So maybe it's better to move this guy up. Hmm. Actually, having this road down here is probably going to affect supply as well. So now this is a 41 instead of being whatever it was before. That's another good point. So this unit is at a 71, which means, okay, so two hexes away from the raw is still totally okay. So one, two, one, two. Yeah, this one's probably still in trouble. <laughs> How is this one? So I guess it's taking 75 to cross the river, 60 to cross the stream and 50, no, 50 to cross the stream. It's very cool. We finally get to see what it is. So it's 13 here, and this is a fields hex, 
which should be 25. So take 25 out of the 75 it increases by, and yeah, it's 50 to cross the stream. Okay, good to know, 50 to cross the stream. Very good, so we've taken Neem, hooray for us. Not that it's a big surprise. Do we have any more bombardment we need to do? Is there anything else we need to do? Yeah, I'm still not using these unit cards, which I don't know if it's a good thing, bad thing. Okay, let's get these guys pushing forward. Yeah, so because of that, uh, no, actually we'll be able to supply, as soon as we connect here, we'll be able to supply through this road. So that's much less important than the road in the south, I guess. So we'll go ahead and move this guy. It looks like he can't get here. I'll move him here then. So he's ready for next turn. Great, well, what are the things we want to do before we finish? I think we have some artillery in here, and I think it's about time we start reinforcing. By the way, can this guy move anywhere? No. He's not grayed out, so it, it looks like he can, but it's just an illusion. Okay, so let's start transporting these artillery and making our groups finally groups of five, which is going to be better because the attack stack. So we'll get these guys. This guy's also close by. We'll get him. And I don't want to directly transfer into anything that isn't gray because it could... I don't know how it'll affect things. So I'm going to give the horse and the artillery to red and let him distribute it when he's good and ready. Let's check on our staff percentage. 106, 110, and 105. Okay, so this guy's going to get some more units. So let's transfer a few here. Maybe 10 more. You can see that our rail capacity is just really not used in any great extent anymore. We can probably even transport the trucks. We have, um, I think, a few extra trucks here. Yeah, but they're actually going to go to the new headquarters I eventually will make here. So eventually we're going to have one attack headquarters in the south, in the middle, and in the north. Of course, that's what my naming scheme has been all along, that we have an Eastern, a Northern, and there eventually will be a Southern besides the Supreme. All right, so good, let's end the turn and then see how the enemy reacts. I'm just gonna browse the lines one more time to make sure I'm not missing anything. I kind of am, so we need to move these guys forward. Like this guy, he doesn't need to stay there, there's no point. Should we move him North or South though? I think we'll move him North. Yeah, we'll move him North. And these guys can all move forward as well. Oh, this guy can move all the way there. Well, that's excellent. Machine gun, let's get him into the city. And that's the furthest he can move. These guys also move them forward. That's the farthest we can move. The farthest we can move. And this guy, he can move here as well. Fantastic. Okay, this all looks good. We didn't do any attacks with the armor. I wonder if that's something we should reconsider. Eventually, Velberg will be reinforced. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is... I don't think it's risky. <laughs> okay, it kind of is. How many units do you have? Do you have enough rangers? You do. So let's create a new unit here. And transport 50 new rangers in. Okay, good. That's a new special forces group. And now we can shift everyone north, which means that that frees these tanks to do something stupid or whatever they want, really. And I guess the thing I'm planning to do is either to move north. Well, we can move north at 40 and then move here. Yeah, I'm Actually, it seems weird, like, why am I doing that? But I just wanted to get an extra reconnaissance and exert border control over here, which makes it harder for them to keep moving east. So we're just starting to surround Velberg more and more. We got a little more reconnaissance, etc. All right, now I'm good to end the turn. Haven't really seen how the east is going. Looks like some funny actions are going on. Lorient's well in hand by the Russians. Okay, now things are going to get important. Attacks. No, no attacks. Yes, an attack, and they were victorious. They 
Well, that was against the Germans, though. I mean, that was against the Germans against the French. Okay, I'm very happy about that. That means we weren't attacked at all. Very solid. Okay, I'm pretty happy. So, let's just quickly review. I didn't really see what happened, but... Yeah, so we weakened this unit up quite a bit, and they were... There was a follow-up attack by the Germans. Now, the Germans probably also lost... They didn't move in there. I was going to say they probably lost some readiness, which means we can counterattack them. But, oh, they moved in with a different force. Okay, well, let's check the lines real fast before we call this video to a close. Obviously, I have been planning this, of course, from the beginning, that I want to move and cut off some units here. Possibly, I think we have good enough reconnaissance that this is legitimately an empty hex. Otherwise, we could move in and be surprise attacked. It would be That would be bad, but... I just, I'm going to hope that we that this is legit. If we can do an attack like here and here, we can cut off quite a few forces in this tank factory. Otherwise, mainly what I want to do is just solidify my defenses and stay where we are. There's no strategic value unless I can get all the way to this aircraft factory, which we don't need because what I'll probably do on this turn is increase my machine guns, and then at the end of this turn, when I'm done with my actions, I'll upgrade all my machine guns to machine gun fours. I've decided to do that instead of doing the light tanks, which was the two things I was debating between. Because this, again, I think I already mentioned this, but light tank two has already this 25% tanks. So the 25% HP bonus goes up to 50. But the only other advantage you get is this 20% move. And that's... Not usually the limiting factor um, for me. If there's a super breakthrough and you really need to move far, it can be helpful. But I prefer combat stats, which is what the machine guns will give us. Yeah, and this looks like a... Actually, I even think this would be a prime unit to attack if we can get this armor involved, which we can. Alright, well thanks for watching this episode, and I will see you in the next.